Well, we're uh, looking forward to this match with UCLA. Um, you know, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the year that this was a place we'd like to be at uh, come May, uh, playing in the NCAA championships. Um, you know, I, and I think clearly that's a goal that a lot of teams have. And um, it, it's neat to be one of the last four still standing uh, and having a chance to play in a surrounding that we're pretty familiar with. Um, playing a team that we had a chance to play against here in January. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think both teams have changed uh, a little bit since then. Um, uh, you know, we didn't have our full lineup on the floor, and neither did UCLA. I think now we both do. So, you know, I think that's what's going to make it exciting. Um, and uh, clearly this is UCLA's getting back into the mix with, with John, and uh, they, I'm sure they're excited about it. But um, it should be a fun match. It should be a fun match. And, uh, you know, I just hope both teams come out and just play relaxed and, and play good volleyball, and we'll see what happens. Coach Vinny Lopes here from Off the Block. I know you talked a little bit about the lineup changing, but what other aspects of volleyball do you feel that you guys have improved upon since January when you last played UCLA? You know, Vinny, I, I think we always talk about volleyball in January is not real pretty because, you know, you're coming off a break and you're just trying to kind of find your rhythm and, and get some things going. Um, I, you know, I, I think what we found is, is our ability to kind of deal with adversity as much as anything. Um, you know, I, I think we've been pretty statistically good over over time. Uh, you know, our offense has been pretty good. Our serving numbers have been pretty good. Um, but as in the match last night where, you know, we had a big lead early, we were seem to seemingly in control, and then George Mason kind of rallies and, and, and plays well and takes the first game. And, um, you know, I, I think at that point in time, we could have gone either direction. And uh, through what we've been through this season, I think the guys now understand that, hey, let's put that one to bed, move on, keep things in front of you, and just keep playing. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing is, is just I, I believe that our mentality has, has developed and grown and our confidence in one another has grown. Um, I don't think you win 20 or 21 in a row without having some confidence in the guy next to you and trusting him. Um, and, and so I believe that's the biggest thing that happened, and that kind of happened uh, after that night in Columbus when Ball State uh, beat us. And again, we were ahead early, we were in control, and then it kind of went through our fingers. And I think at that point in time, we kind of said, you know, we've, we've got to fix that. And, and I think we've done a good job of that. And Coach, talking about UCLA, they run the 6-2 offense, something we don't see in men's volleyball. How do you prepare for that? Do you call your old coach McHaley in the women's game and ask how he <laughs> prepares for a 6-2? How do you get ready for that? Uh, no, I don't call Mick. Uh, I'm not sure Mick would take my phone call. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think it changes anything dramatically. You, you know, you're still going to see three hitters in, in the front row. Uh, uh, you know, we know who they are. Um, you know, I think that's just John's way of getting his best six guys on the court. It, it's a little different fashion, but, it, Vinny, it's not rocket science. We're not, we're not uh, doing brain surgery here. It's volleyball. Um, so, you know, we trust that these guys can figure it out. And, and it's about communication. It's about just continuing to identify what's going on and, and, and who the important guys are. And every team has important guys, and we know who their important guys are. So if we stay focused on them, we'll be fine. Nick wouldn't give you advice on how to beat UCLA? Well, he probably would, but uh, <laughs> uh, might not be legal. Uh, so. yeah. uh, Coach, you had mentioned earlier about um, having been here before. Do you feel like you've got a little bit of a home court advantage because you guys are here a lot more often than any of the other teams that are playing here this weekend? Well, I, I would like to hope so. Uh, you know, that happened uh, five years ago when uh, we were fortunate enough to get through the semifinals and, and beat Penn State and then... Then the crowd kind of became pro Ohio State because of maybe the Big Ten connection, or maybe they just have adopted us as their second son since we are here so often. But um, you know, I, I would like to think that uh, you know we're going to have a pretty favorable crowd. Um, but I, I'm sure that the, there'll be some people rooting for UCLA. So uh, uh, you know, hopefully, it just our, our play will spur some people on to, to help support us a little bit. Miles, you and Christian, you want to follow up on that? Like the comfort factor, not only playing here so often, but also now, you know, you have one more match in this tournament over UCLA, and how is that shaking out, and how have the team feels over the last couple of days? Um, yeah, I mean, aside from St. John, I think this is my second favorite gym to play in. So coming back here, it's always pretty comfortable, and it gives me personally, but I know our team, 
um, a pretty big confidence booster playing with Christian. So. The playing the playing match Christian was that something you guys are saying? Hey, this is an advantage because we've got the jitters out. Yeah, I mean, I think first finding out that we had to play in the playing match was a little frustrating at first, but we kind of were just like we have to either get mad about it or kind of just use it to our advantage and. So we went into the game thinking like, hey, this can only help us really get used to the sport court, get used to the arena again, and I think in the end it, it is going to turn out in our favor. Just to follow up on that, Miles and Christian, do you guys feel that you were slighted not being the number two seed and having a bye of the semifinals, or is it one of those things where you didn't care and let's just go out and play volleyball? I mean, honestly, I wasn't too surprised. Like, I heard it and I was like, okay, well, let's go play and win. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too big. We have full, full trust in everybody who made that decision. But it, I mean, it wasn't. It was kind of disappointing. But it, I mean, there's a reason for everything, kind of thing. Miles, I, I want to ask you, um, in particular, because you had an opportunity this season to get a lot of balls set your way, especially after a match like last night where it set to you 40 times. How is your shoulder feeling after a match like that? And how do you just kind of prepare and rehab for the next match? Um. Feels good. My shoulder feels fine. The, my tricep was bugging me last weekend, but I've got work done on it, building up to the tournament. So it's feeling pretty good today. I'm not too worried about it, I mean, other than ice yeah. and stretching. And you just talk and talking about your game as a whole. You know, what do you feel that you've been able to make the biggest step in this season as a player on the court? Um, well, this is my first year playing right side. Um, personally, I think just hitting D ball. That's been my m biggest comfort zone. But other than that, just swinging and then. Progressively getting to the point where I'm very comfortable blocking on the right has been like it's been fun for me to learn. So it's always different, but it's fun. Yeah. Coach, uh, speaking of the 40 swings, both for Miles and for Nick last night, did, from your perspective, do you like that going to the, the hot hands, or would you rather see the ball spread around a little bit more evenly? Um, you know, I, I I think you just have to kind of take it as it comes. Um, when there are opportunities to keep. The, the spread a little more even, uh, that's great. When when you've got guys that are really on a hot streak, uh, you know, we tend to say, hey, get those guys the ball um, if they're really having some success. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of goes both ways. I think it just depends on the situation. But, uh, you know, it, clearly the best way is to have true balance across the court. Uh, you know, I, th I think the big thing is we'd like to get our middles a few more, a few more slings and it and that's kind of dependent on, on our quality of our passing. So if we can get the quality of the passing up a bit, we'd like to get Blake or Matt or, or Driss a little more involved in the offense. I think that will take some pressure off of Nick and Miles and Christian. Um, but if we don't, then they know they've got to be able to deal with two blockers, and, uh, and they've done a great job all year long. So um, you just kind of take it as it comes. Christian, I want to, can you take us back maybe two years ago? You were at the University of Pacific, that program disbanded. Can you just talk about what that time in your life was like, kind of going through that season, playing on a team that you would know, know wouldn't be there at the end of the year, and how you wound up at Ohio State? Uh, yeah, it was uh, obviously not something that you want to, I think it was the fourth day of school that we went into the first semester, and they called us in and pretty much told us that it wasn't going to be a, a team anymore, and it's obviously something that we none of us expected. And I think the hardest part about it was the whole year going through preseason and going through season that this was going to be the last time that we did play together and this was going to be the last time that we got to hang out with our friends at the school and everything so it, that was hard um, I remember the second time going through the whole recruiting process the first time let me tell you it's really fun talking to coaches and getting letters and everything but the second time I know I put it off for like a month because I just didn't even want to think about it honestly um, but I knew I, going into that school I had one mission and that was to win a national championship and I knew that whatever team I'd be lucky to play on that was going to be my same mission I was going to win a national championship and it's always been a dream to make this tournament so uh, now that I'm actually here it's kind of surreal but um, at the time it was hard but now looking back at it, it I couldn't have made a better switch